Hello, this is Dr. Trevor from physicsthisweek.com. What I'd like to do today is take a few moments to show you how to take some data in Excel that looks fairly ugly on this side and put it into a nice setup like we have over here on the right hand side that you could easily put into a um, lab report and you could be proud about it. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm going to take this original information and I'm going to leave that there, but I'm going to work in the center section to get to my goal, which is on the right. Now, in practice, you don't have to do all of these sets. I would normally just work on my original set of data and make it look pretty from there. Okay, so there are many things wrong with this original set of data um, because it's a work in progress, but I don't want to leave it that way. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make sure that I get my units in here. And the time was measured in seconds. This distance happened to be measured in meters. And so I put those guys in. Now notice that made my uh, cells or my word here go a little bit out past the edge of the cell. So what I can do here is a combination of two things. One, I want to make it stand out a little bit. So I'm going to do it bold. That made it a little bit wider, unfortunately. And I can take this and decrease the font size just a step or two. You don't want to get too small here, but notice now it fits a little bit better. And I can also take this and maybe use a different font. So I like Cambria. Notice that made it a little wider. So I could narrow down my cells or widen my cells a little bit, but that's getting a little bit out of hand. So what I'm actually going to do here is take these guys, tap them down one more, and then maybe make this one a little bit wider. That's a little too wide. I'm gonna adjust it so that my label fits in. And then this one, I can make a little narrower as well. Okay. Now that makes my labels all set up and ready to go. The next thing I want to do is work on the significant digits and or the display of decimals. Now, of course, those two things are greatly related to each other. So what I'm going to do here with the time, I know that I originally recorded the time to the hundredth of a second. But if I type in 1.00 and hit enter, it gets rid of those decimal places. That is a quirk of Excel. And there's a way that I can adjust for that. So first of all, since I'm doing this to the whole column, I'm going to select the whole column. And then I'm going to come up here to this area where it says general at the top. It might say something slightly different there. There's lots of options in there. But what I'm looking for is these two guys. So I am going to increase the decimal. Notice there it got me right where I wanted it to be. Now, if I had gone a little bit more precise with my measurements, I could take that up a couple of steps, a couple of more decimal places, or I can lower it down a little bit. Since I measured to the tenth of a decimal, I'm good to go. Now, these guys are butt up against the right-hand side of the um, display. That's kind of normally how Excel shows numbers. If I move them to the middle, I run into this problem where the decimals aren't quite lined up. So I'm going to put it back here, but I want to give myself a little bit more room within the cell. So I'm going to hit alignment. And I'm going to go here to where it says text alignment. If this doesn't go right to the right spot, just click on the alignment tab. I'm going to do right with an indent. Notice there's several choices there. And I'm going to indent this, and I usually bump that to two. Now when I hit OK, you see this has moved over a little bit. Maybe two for this narrower column was a little bit too much. So let me change that back to one. Hit OK. Now notice down here that my decimal places are aligned nicely. And I still have a little bit of room on each side of the cell. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for these guys. Um, let's say that the distance was measured down to the uh, tenth of a centimeter or hundredth of a meter. I can 
click this right down to the right spot. Now notice that the numbers there still have all of these final zeros or final uh, digits in it. So any calculations that are done will be done with that. And in fact, the way I got these numbers was not in actual data that I recorded, but I did a step here where I took this first number and I divided it by three. That can happen in the analysis columns of your data set and it will give you wonky numbers of significant digits because just like a calculator, it wants to show as many significant digits as it can. So what I'm going to do here, like I said, is just tap this down a little bit. And because my distance is a little wide on this column, to try to get it close to the center, but maybe not perfectly, maybe this one I'll do three. See how that looks? And that looks pretty good. Notice it's all nicely aligned. Now, if you're a purist on significant digits, this first one only has two significant digits. Down here it has three. Um, don't worry about that. What you're really interested here is the precision that you measured it so that these numbers align very nicely. Notice here when they don't align in my original data set, it's kind of hard to see what the trend is because your eye has to keep jumping back and forth and back and forth as you go down. Whereas here, with this lined up, you can follow the pattern very, very nicely. Okay, so I'm well on my way to making my um, table go from this ugly thing to this pretty thing. Now what I want to do is add some borders. Now the borders that you add are going to depend on your professor's particular instructions. And it's also going to depend on um, if you're putting it to a journal, they might have specific setup for that. But it's very easy to adjust the way these borders are set up. So I'm going to select my whole table. And I'm going to go here under font to this drop down that is the borders. And what I normally do is I start out with all borders. And then I will put an outside border on. And I like the thick outside borders. And I like to put one of those up here as well. Okay. So again, that's not the only way to do it. But now I've taken my table and I've made it look uh, pretty decent here. So now I'm ready to take this table and put it into my lab report. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my table and I'm going to hit Control C to copy it or I'm going to right click and hit copy. And then I'm going to go to my lab report. And if you remember in my classes, I give you a nice lab report template to work with. And I'm going to put this here under my experimental data. Now, of course, in this template, I'm going to write my lab report, but it's often handy to have your experimental data in here. So I'm going to paste it, but I've got several options on how I can paste it. Okay, you might be tempted to do link and use the destination styles. I'll warn you that that's probably not the best idea to do. You don't want to do that because if you change something in your Excel file, it will automatically change it over here. But if you delete this Excel file or you move it somewhere, it can become corrupted over here in Excel. OK, and notice that it's using the destination style for that one. I could keep the source formatting, although it doesn't always translate very nicely. What I generally like to do is paste it as a picture. Now, the reason I like to paste it as a picture is because now if I change something over here, it's not going to be screwed up here in this one. OK, now look, notice here. There are some formatting type things. Sometimes that's just the screen size. Notice as I zoom in a little bit, that changes. When you print it out, it's going to look very nice. Okay. Now, what I need to do next is I need to make this fit into my uh, lab report. Now, in a perfect world, I would set this up so that my uh, lab report is perfectly 
accessible. Uh, so if somebody was looking at it with a screen reader, they would be able to read it. That's a whole nother ball of wax that we would need to worry about. So what I'm going to suggest you do here is notice when you select the graph that you put or the table you put in, I'm going to hit layout options and I'm going to put it as square. That allows me to have my data table in here with my words that I'm talking about for it. Again, that's not perfect, but uh, for this level of your lab reports, that'll be fine. Now I can talk about my data right next to my data table. So hopefully this information has been helpful and you will now be able to start with some ugly looking data and make it into a nice looking table that you can be proud to put into your lab report. Okay, go out, do an experiment and good luck.